Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of a group of sulfanilide compounds. This work was published in Nature Communications by the Shea Group in their paper, Asymmetric Total Synthesis of Benzenoid Cephalotain Diterpenoids Through a Cascade CSP2 and CSP3H Activation. The sulfanilides A to D were first isolated in 2017 from Cephalotaxis sinensis, while the sulfuralide compounds were isolated in 2022 from Cephalotaxis fortune. The cephalotain diterpenoids is quite a rich group of compounds with over 110 members isolated, many of which show potent anti-tumor activities. We've looked at the synthesis of these compounds before, back in 2022, when the Sarpon group published their route utilizing an intramolecular deals alder strategy. The sphanolides are quite a challenging target for total synthesis, as they have a fused polycyclic core with either five or six rings and varying patterns of oxidation around this carbon skeleton. This is made even more challenging by the presence of up to seven contiguous stereocenters within the molecule. To synthesize these compounds, the researchers would first construct the polycyclic core and then introduce the oxidation using established methodologies. To do this, they would utilize a novel reaction cascade involving the sequential CH activation of both sp2 and sp3 centers to form three bonds in just one reaction. This would be done using palladium catalysis and norbornene to shuttle the palladium between different reacting centers. Conceptually, this can be thought of as an extension of the Catalani reaction which can be used to forge bonds to two contiguous sp2 centers, such as we saw utilized in the total synthesis of cochlear B. So let's start with the synthesis. This started with the alkylation of a keto ester by first generating an enolate at the alpha position, which then reacted with an alkyl iodide, forming the quaternary center in a 62% yield, with the stereoselectivity driven by the steric hindrance of the methyl group on the adjacent carbon center. This methyl group had been introduced stereoselectively using previously reported methodology utilizing a chiral catalyst. The stereochemistry of this centre would template the stereoselectivity of all later reactions. Taking this forward, the ketone then took part in a Bamford-Stevens reaction. Tosyl hydrazide first reacts with the ketone to form a tosyl hydrazone. This is then deprotonated by sodium hydride and a tosyl anion is then eliminated. The resulting diazo compound then eliminates nitrogen gas forming a carbene that can undergo a 1-2 hydride shift to form the target alkene. The reaction was then quenched and added to a solution of hydrofluoric acid, which deprotected the TBS group, generating the product with a 36% yield. This newly revealed hydroxyl group then took part in an appell reaction. Carbon tetrabromide is first attacked by triphenylphosphine, generating a phosphonium bromide species and a tribromomethyl anion. This deprotonates the hydroxyl group and the resulting alkoxide attacks the triphenylphosphonium bromide, forming an electrophilic intermediate which can then be attacked by the bromide. This eliminates triphenylphosphine oxide to produce the target alkyl bromide. This compound was not isolated and instead a solution of chromium trioxide and dimethylpyrazole was added to the reaction mixture. The chromium complex that is formed is attacked by the alkene while the pyrazole ligand acts as a base to deprotonate the allylic position. One of the oxygens bound to the chromium then attacks this position, forming a carbon-oxygen bond, while the carbon-chromium bond is broken. The pyrazole once again acts as a base, deprotonating this position, while the chromium is eliminated to produce the target enone in a 63% yield, with a 12% yield of the brominated intermediate also recovered. In the next step, the ketone was reduced using a loose reduction. Cerium trichloride first coordinates to the carbonyl, making it more electrophilic, and driving selectivity for direct addition of the hydride rather than conjugate addition. Quenching the alkoxide intermediate that is formed produced the target alcohol in an 83% yield. This then took part in an intramolecular esterification. The alcohol is deprotonated by sodium hydride, which eliminates hydrogen gas, and the alkoxide then undergoes intramolecular addition into the ester. This eliminates ethoxide, forming the target bicyclic lactone in a 69% yield. This ester could then be reduced using dibal. The hydride adds to the ester, forming an aluminium alkoxide complex. This was worked up using Rochelle's salt, 
which removes the aluminium and generates the target hemiacetal. This compound was not purified and instead the crude mixture was refluxed in chloroform with methanol to form the methyl acetal. The hemiacetal can eliminate hydroxide, forming an oxocarbenium intermediate. This can then be attacked by the methanol, forming the methyl acetal, which is more thermodynamically stable than the hemiacetal starting material. This process was repeated three times, generating a 65% yield in total. With this in hand, they could then carry out the critical CH activation cascade. Palladium-0 first undergoes oxidative addition into an iota aryl compound, and this species then adds across a double bond of norbornene. This then undergoes CH activation at the ortho position, forming a carbon-palladium bond. Another oxidative addition then occurs, this time into the carbon-bromine bond of the previously prepared bicyclic intermediate. Reductive elimination from this species forms the first carbon-carbon bond of the cascade. Norbornine is then expelled, leaving the palladium bound to the aryl species. This then adds across the double bond of the bicyclic system, forming the next carbon-carbon bond of the sequence. The palladium, now coordinated to a pivolate ligand, then promotes another CH activation, forming a bond to the carbon of the methyl group, while the pivolate abstracts the proton. Another reductive elimination then occurs, expelling pivolic acid, regenerating palladium zero, and forming the third and final carbon-carbon bond of the cascade. From this one intermediate, they could synthesize several sphanolide compounds. To access sphanolide A, they first hydrolyze the acetal using hydrochloric acid, forming the ring open structure in a 91% yield and unambiguously confirming a structure using extra crystallography. The alcohol revealed by this hydrolysis was then oxidized using a swarn oxidation. DMSO first attacks oxalyl chloride, eliminating chloride that then acts as a nucleophile to attack the sulfur atom. This forms a sulfonium chloride species upon the elimination of carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and chloride. The hydroxyl group attacks the sulfonium chloride and the resulting intermediate is then deprotonated by triethylamine. An intramolecular hydride abstraction then occurs, eliminating dimethyl sulfide and forming the desired ketone. In the next step, the aldehyde was oxidized using a pinic oxidation. Chlorous acid is first generated by the reaction of sodium chloride and sodium dihydrogen phosphate. This hypochlorous acid first protonates the aldehyde, allowing chlorate to attack as a nucleophile. An intramolecular hydrogen abstraction then occurs, eliminating hypochlorous acid while forming the tarbic carboxylic acid with an 85% yield over two steps. The hypochlorous acid that is generated is scavenged in situ by a reaction with 2-methylbutene. Taking this compound forward, it was further oxidized, this time with a Davis oxidation. It is first deprotonated with potassium HMDS, forming an enolate adjacent to the ketone. This enolate attacks the oxyzeridine of the Davis reagent, forming the carbon-oxygen bond. This is then eliminated as an alkoxide, which is protonated upon workup to generate the target alcohol in a 71% yield. In the next step, the ketone was reduced using sodium borohydride and the unpurified crude material was then taken forward to a Mukiyama esterification. The carboxylic acid is first deprotonated with triethylamine and this attacks the Mukiyama reagent. The resulting activated ester then undergoes intramolecular attack from the hydroxyl group, eliminating methylpyridone and forming the target ester with a 41% yield over two steps. This molecule was once again oxidized using a Suarez oxidation. Bis-acetoxyiodobenzene is first attacked by the hydroxyl group and eliminates an equivalent of acetate. Photoradiation of this intermediate promotes the homolysis of the oxygen-iodine bond. The resulting oxygen radical then intramolecularly abstracts a hydrogen atom from the benzylic position, forming a carbon radical that then reacts with iodine. Another intramolecular reaction then occurs, this time with the nucleophilic attack of the hydroxyl group onto the carbon iodide, forming the target 5-membered ring in an 89% yield. With this ring now formed, a simple demethylation with boron tribromide reveals the phenolic hydroxyl group and completed the synthesis of sulfanilide A with a 63% yield. Moving forward to sulfanilide B, they started with the same methoxyacetal, which was oxidized using boron trifluoride and MCPBA. 
The boron trifluoride first coordinates to the acetal, promoting the formation of an oxocarbenium ion, which is then attacked by MCPBA. An intramolecular hydrogen abstraction then occurs, eliminating metachlorobenzoic acid and forming an ester. As before, the compound can be demethylated using boron tribromide to form sphenolide B in a 94% yield. To access sphenolide C, they started with the acetal intermediate that lacked the phenolic methoxy group and oxidized it using boron trifluoride and MCPBA as we saw before. This was then taken forward to a benzylic oxidation. n hydroxythalamide first forms a radical by the reaction with cobalt-2 acetate, potassium bromide and oxygen. This abstracts a hydrogen atom from the benzylic position and the radical that is formed reacts with another equivalent of dioxygen. The peroxy radical that is formed reacts with another equivalent of N-hydroxythalamide, regenerating the radical and further oxidation of this peroxide forms a ketone. This formed the monooxidized product in a 33% yield, together with a 27% yield of sphanolide C, which had been further oxidized at the tertiary benzylic position. Finally, the researchers turned their attention towards sphanolide D and sephorolide B. Taking the same lactone intermediate that was used for sphanolide C, they subjected it to an electrophilic bromination using tribromocyanouric acid. This is first protonated by TFA, making it more electrophilic, and it then undergoes an electrophilic aromatic substitution with the phenyl ring. This reaction was not regioselective and formed the product in a 59% yield as an inseparable mixture. This mixture was then subject to a methoxy carbonylation. Palladium first undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon bromine bond, and carbon monoxide then adds to this complex. A migratory insertion then occurs, forming the new carbon carbon bond. Methanol, present in the solvent mixture, can react with this complex, adding to the carbonyl to form an ester, and allowing for palladium zero to be regenerated. This formed a mixture of regioisomers in an 82% yield with a 5 to 1 ratio. By subjecting this mixture to the same benzylic oxidation that we saw before, the researchers completed the synthesis of the sphanolides, producing sphanolide C in a 30% yield and sphorolide B in a 19% yield.